Welcome back to the Maroon Report. I'm Ian Reed. Here's a look at sports. Bulldog fans will get their first look at the men's and women's basketball teams tomorrow night at Maroon Madness. Maroon Madness is just one of several events going on during homecoming week on campus. There's plenty of excitement around both teams this season. Vic Schaefer's ladies will start the season ranked in the top 10 nationally, while year two under Ben Howland features his youngest but most talented squad yet. Doors will open at 6.30 and fans will be treated to a Greek stroll off at 7. A three-point contest, a dunk contest, scrimmage, and much more. After dropping their last four, Mississippi State Volleyball got back on track with yet another season sweep of Tennessee. It's the first time in this program's 42-year history that State has swept the season series from Tennessee. The Bulldogs took all three sets from the Vols last month in Knoxville. Every Gray Singleton led the Maroon and White with 12 kills, 12 kills last night. The Bulldogs couldn't capitalize on a first set win at Arkansas and dropped their sixth SEC match of the season, 3-1 in Fayetteville. State will go back on the road this weekend when they face Missouri. Football streak of six consecutive bowl appearances may be in serious jeopardy now that the Bulldogs dropped their third straight game Saturday night. Mississippi State's 40-38 loss at Kentucky Saturday night dropped the Maroon and White to 2-5 and five on the season. And now the Bulldogs must win four of their final five to reach the postseason. The loss in Lexington was also MSU's first to the Wildcats since 2008. State has a chance to get win number three this Saturday against FCS Power Sanford. 2.30 kickoff set for the SEC Network. The World Series is now tied at a game apiece. Chicago stormed back last night to win game two in Cleveland, and even though the series is headed back to Wrigley, while game one was all about Cleveland starter Corey Kluber, game two was controlled by Cubs starter and last year's NL Cy Young winner Jake Arrieta. Next three games will be played in the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. The Cubs still looking for their first world championship since 1908 and the Indians since 1948. Week holds their Christmas fashion show. Style Revel held a fashion show Tuesday night. Lady Weeks, the owner of Style Revel, says they hold the fashion show every year to show their customers the new clothes in the store for the winter season and to help increase revenue for local shops during the holiday season. The store closed early in the day of the show, the re the then reopened after the show for a late night shopping spree with 20% off discount. Weeks says that enough that even though most of the customers are students, holiday shopping is steady. When we come back, Alex Fenton will sit down with Lisa Pritchard, who is Mississippi State's mascot handler. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Maroon Report. We go to Alex Fenton over at our interview desk, ready to tell us more about MSU's mascot. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Coming up on the Maroon Report, see how MSU students set the rivalry with Ole Miss aside for a better cause. We have that story plus more after the break. Bulldog fans, I'm Ian Reed. I'm here with Jasmine Johnson, a senior member of the volleyball team here at Mississippi State. Jasmine, thanks for joining us today. Oh, no problem at all. I'm excited to do it. Okay, okay. Jasmine, you guys opened up SEC play this past weekend when you guys had a big victory over Tennessee. Talk about what that did to like the team morale and not only the team morale, but yourself as well. Um, I think the biggest thing about that Tennessee win was that it was on the road. So, I mean, I think it boosted each other's confidence and not just ourselves, but in each other. You know, I was, we were able to trust each other a little bit more after that win. Because, um, I mean, the environment in there was crazy. It wasn't like it was an empty gym or whatever. And yourself, how have you seen improvement in your game from maybe last season up to this point? Um, I think with me, I definitely just have much more confidence. Um, last season, playing middle was definitely a new role for me. Um, I had never really done it. I've always been a right side. And so when coach, you know, asked me to be middle, it wasn't like, oh snaps, I don't want to do this, but I have to. It was more like, I'll do whatever I need to do for the team. You are one of the senior leaders on this team. You know, how do you lead this team? I think my biggest thing is I lead by example. You know, I never want to tell the girls to do something if I'm not doing it. Um, you know, I never want to say like, guys, go all out, give everything you got, leave all your energy on the court, and then they look at me and I'm not sweating at all. And everybody knows Jazz is drenched in sweat all the time. So, I mean, my biggest thing is that if I'm telling them to do one thing as a leader and as one of the captains, I have to do it as well. What are some things you're looking to accomplish with the rest of the season? Left? Um, I said it back in July, and I'm going to you know, keep saying it until it happens, the NCAA tournament. You know, this school has never done that, and we will be the first team to go. Like, what type of impact has this coaching staff had on your life? I love the coaching staff because I can talk to them on a more spiritual level as well. Where I came from, I didn't have that. And that's, growing up, that's all I knew. You know, when I was having problems, you turn to God and not man. And so I had to learn that really quickly, and I have that here. I have that in all three, you know, John, Britt, and Fatch. And 
it's good to know that people care about you, especially your coaches past volleyball. Jasmine, you're currently second in the conference in block, and the team is currently the league leader in block. What's gone into you know this amazing achievement so far throughout the um, season? Team-wise, John, our, one of our assistant coaches, has spent a lot of time working on our blocking. Um, I'll never forget the very first day of training camp um, back in August, we worked on a lot of blocking. So, I mean, I think from that day, you know, Fatch and the rest of the coaching staff was determined to make us a better blocking team. Uh, looking uh, at the game tonight against Auburn, you know, what's it going to take? What are you guys going to have to bring to this game to come out with the W? Tonight will be fun. Uh, our first SEC opener, uh, the first last one for seniors. Uh, so it'll be a little bit of an emotional night. But do I think, it's, you know, we're capable of just sweeping them and keep going? Oh, yeah, most definitely. But it's going to take us being mentally ready, physically ready, and just being focused on what we have to do. Well, Jasmine, thanks for sitting down and spending time with oh, us today. No problem, no problem. Bulldog fans, don't forget, you can catch Jasmine and the rest of the Bulldog volleyball team here at the Grist tonight as they take on the Auburn Tigers at 7 p.m. More than 100 students have come to the drill field today in order to raise awareness about sexual violence against men and women by creating their own t-shirt display. Beth Serengay shares with us why a cause such as this one is so important. Violence is such a taboo topic, and this helps, this display helps open the floor for a conversation about violence and how we should end it and just be nice to one another because, you know, it's a hard life already, so we just soon be nice to one another instead of making it harder by being mean and harming others. These shirts display people's stories and, like, the scars that are left behind from violence of any kind towards them. So it's just be mindful of how you act towards others and what you say, either in person or online. Participants are able to choose from an array of colors. Each color promotes awareness of the many forms of violence, as well as those that have lost loved ones due to sexual violence. Amber Orr, a freshman here at MSU, says that she wants abuse of all forms to end. Stop abuse anywhere, you know, to anyone. Don't, it don't matter who it is, boy, girl, man, woman, um, because we don't know, like, that has a big effect on their lives. It was election day in Starkville, and with the results of the 2016 presidential election all tallied, the Maroon Report visited local polling locations to gain further insight into what some Starkville residents hoped to see from the elected official, despite whichever candidate was announced victorious. At the end of the day, we'll all be able to come together just as Americans, regardless of anything else, and that you know, whoever is elected, they can actually do what they say they're going to do. I expect, first of all, first and foremost, for the process of democracy to work. I expect moving forward is for the, whoever the, whomever the president is, the elect is, is for them to go in and try to have a smooth transition with the current, the sitting president, which is President Barack Obama, to make that transition and get down to business of trying to bring this country back together. It was a long day at the polls for residents, which had been coupled with an historic, long, and very controversial campaign. Many residents say they're just happy to see that it's finally come to an end. Most happy. It seems like it's been forever coming, so I'm proud that we're finally coming to the vote and it will move forward from here. For the Maroon Report, I'm Ian Reed. And I'm not um, necessarily for it because it does take away from people getting to spend time with their families. I have a lot of friends in the band, and so I know that does really kind of stink for them. You know, they won't be able to spend time with their families. And um, it's going to get Wednesday, it'll be Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, and it just kind of like jumbles things up. Even though it's, you know, for, it's a tradition, but Thanksgiving is a tradition too, so I feel like it should not be Thanksgiving. It could be really nice to have it back on Thanksgiving, um, just because as an out-of-state student, I'm actually not a country student, my family is military and they're stationed overseas, and so for me, I don't really have any tradition that I get to do on Thanksgiving Day, and I don't have anybody to spend it with. So it's kind of cool for us that are far away from home or international students or that don't really have family or traditions to be able to have something collectively to do on Thanksgiving okay, Day. We've always had the tradition of watching NFL and now we'll have the Egg Bowl and I've always been one of those where I'd rather spend time with family and being the Egg Bowl in regular season I can go to that and spend time with family on Thanksgiving. I disagree with it. I'm more for family time. I think uh, Thanksgiving is like time for thanks, you know, and uh, everyone should be spending time with their family and enjoying that.